The IRS issued letters recognizing Scientology, and every one of its organizations has fully tax exempt. The length of time from the planet Coltis to the planet Tigiak, which is the name of this planet, was nine weeks. And they had elected a fellow by the name of Zemu, uh, could be spelled X-E-M-U, to the supreme ruler. Part four, we are back. Now that we know what it takes to be clear, we are going to look at what it takes to level up in Scientology. We're also going to look at some of the darker operations within Scientology. So be warned, this is your trigger warning. Now, before you can start any of the OT levels, you're gonna to have to have an eligibility check. You see, the information on these levels is so confidential that they need to make sure that you are a true believer. You might have to repeat some of the courses and the basics based on how long you've been away, maybe you've been dealing with all your debts from the other courses, who knows? Also, you can't just start the OT levels whenever you feel like it. You actually have to be invited to start. So here I am inviting you to start. Apparently, if you learn any information on these OT levels before you are ready, you could get pneumonia and die. Watch this video at your own risk. In terms of prices, you can get OT one to three as a package deal. It's only 15 grand. It's apparently very dangerous to stay on OT 1 and 2 for too long. Probably because you'll bail. <laughs> so let's have a look at these OT levels, shall we? First up is OT 1. OT 1 is essentially a 13-step guide to people watching. You compare what you don't like about yourself to other people until you realise something big. You will become aware of yourself in relation to others and the physical universe. But that's pretty much it for OT1. Let's move on to OT2. This is where you confront your entire time track as a Satan. You will be told about the incidents that happened to you trillions of years ago. An example of one of these incidents is something called the dance mob. The dance mob happened 18,992 trillion years ago, apparently. It only lasted seven eighths of a second. The idea of this is that there, were a, there was a pole that was trying to capture you and you had to get off of the pole. And while you were trying to get off the pole, there were people chanting. Yes, chanting. The dance mob. The dancing part comes after this incident and there are people around you chanting various things and your job is to figure out what they were chanting in that seven eighths of a second. There are many, many more incidents you have to go through on OT2. You basically have to go over all of these incidents until the e-meter doesn't react anymore. This is where the idea of other beings being on your person is introduced. The idea being that you've got rid of your reactive mind, now you need to get rid of theirs. Now the most notorious level, the most talked about, the most famous is OT3. And again, I am not here to criticize anyone's origin stories. You know, some people believe in spaghetti monster, some people believe in Jesus, and some people believe in aliens, and that's not my business to say it's right or wrong. However, we are gonna talk about what goes down on this level. OT3 is known as the wall of fire. This is the level that Scientologists look forward to the most as it promises to reveal the truth about the universe. Only about 5% of active Scientologists have reached OT3. Most people haven't even reached clear yet. So of course, when people say, oh yeah, you believe in Xenu and the aliens, um, they've never heard of that ever in their life. So of course they're gonna think you're crazy, but it is on this level. When you get onto OT3, it's a very serious official situation. You will be taken into a sealed room to get your documents, there'll be in a locked briefcase that are ID'd to you 
and you have to read them in a room with nobody else around. The documents are handwritten and the handwritten documents are the Xenu story that has been so famously depicted. You can actually find this exact handwritten document all over the internet as it has been leaked. No deaths from pneumonia yet. Back in 1998, Scientology gave all its members a CD called Netscape Navigator. This was a censorware program that restricted all negative information about Scientology. They deleted words like picket, clambake, hemet. Every critic or ex-member's name was deleted from the censorware program. The creation story in OT3 is supposed to explain why we are these low-life level humanoid things instead of these godlike alien creatures that we were supposed to be. Security is strictly enforced on this level. When carried outside the organisation, the documents must always be kept in a locked briefcase and the contents never revealed to anyone outside of the organisation or even anyone inside the organisation that hasn't reached that level yet. Scientologists have been questioned on the news, by the press, about the Xenu story and you will see them flat out deny it and they're doing this to protect you because they don't want you to absolutely lose your mind when you find out the truth. Or the basic tenet of the Church of Scientology is to rid the body of space alien parasites, to clear <laughs> oneself. Um, well, John, d does that sound silly to you? So they just told me to like ask about Xenu. I don't know uh, what that is or anything. It's fine. Oh, so you've never heard that word before then? No. Oh. I don't know what you it's a word. Uh -huh. okay. According to my research, L. Ron Hubbard, the father of Scientology, cl claimed that humans are immortal spiritual beings composed of body, mind, and spirit. But he also claimed that 75 million years ago, an evil galactic ruler named Xenu killed billions of his people by sending them to Earth in space planes. You can understand why some people might feel this is, at best, pretty unconventional, and I guess at worst, just out there, right? right? I can understand that, certainly, Katie. That just has no uh, no basis in, in reality. This is one of those things that gets spread around, one of those old stories so that gets never, run never around. So he never wrote about that? that? No, not, not, not in those terms. The you can find the actual story, the handwritten documents online, and there are even recordings of L. Ron Hubbard telling you. So I'll just let him tell you himself. For this planet, and for this confederacy of the 21 adjacent stars and its 76 planets, it starts out normally with a capture. And they had elected a fellow by the name of Zimu to the Supreme Ruler. He picked out all the cowboys in the white hat and he got rid of them first, fast, and then troops, not knowing what the hell they were doing, but fed all kinds of false orders, were fed in against the population to pick them up, one after the other, rat -a -tat 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 -tat. one of the mechanisms they used was to tell them to come in for an income tax investigation. The trick was to shoot somebody, disable somebody, very often a needle into a lung, and at the same time to hit him with frozen alcohol and glycol, which preparation is guaranteed to pick up a fate. They threw him into collection points, boxed them up in boxes, threw them into space planes, which are the exact copy, DC-8, the DC-8 airplane is the exact copy of the space plane of that day. and they threw them into refrigerated units and so on and, and they took these people in boxes and so forth and they dumped them and then they set off hydrogen bombs on the top of each primary volcano. And when they blew up, it blew the Thetans into the air and after the bomb, an electronic ribbon, which also was a type of standing wave, was erected over the area. The tremendous winds of the planet blew every Thetan there was straight in to those particular vacuum zones which had been created. These were brought down, packed up, and put in front of uh, projection machines.
After this, however, about a, the remainder of the 36 days, which is the bulk of it, is taken up with a 3D super colossal motion picture. Uh, which has to do with God, the devil, uh, space opera, you are the people who own the planet. You are not the people who are going to save the planet. Now, there are some geographical problems with this story. For example, the volcanoes in Hawaii did not even exist when this supposedly happened. I'm not here to dispute the story, you know, if Jesus can turn water into wine, Virgin Mary can get pregnant just like that, you know, who's to say that we weren't frozen in, you know, volcanoes and, and, and sent here by a galactic overlord? Maybe it happened, who knows? Anyway, what you basically learn on OT3 is Earth is a prison planet. You also learn that you have thousands of body thetans all over you. Your mission on OT3 is to audit them out so that they can be free and you can be free. The best way you can do this is to sit alone in a locked room hooked up to an e-meter. You scan your body with your mind until the e-meter reads. Let's say the e-meter reads when you think of your elbow. So then, you need to telepathically communicate with the Thetan in your elbow and, um, you know, ask him to, like, go away, basically. There are a couple of questions you need to ask. You need to ask which volcano they were dropped in. And then after that, you need to go through all the incidents that you learn about and tell him or her what happened to them so that they can be free. Yay, yay, yay. It's hard to explain. We'll just do an example. Three, two, one, example. Three, two, one. Okay. Scanning. Scanning my shoulders. Nothing. Scanning my arms. My elbow. Oh. It reacted. Hello, Satan. Are you awake? So which volcano were you dropped in? I well, have something to tell you. 95 million years ago, sent them to volcanoes on Tijiak. Then he put an H-bomb on the principal volcanoes. They captured you and made you watch Incident bad movie occurs at the start of track. Four quadrillion years. Loud chariot snack. comes out. Turns right and left. Comes out. Horn, Waves of light. Explosion! Now you can go. Be free. Leave my elbow! I don't know about you lot, but this would make me go absolutely crazy. Sitting in a room by yourself, talking to th things on your body that may or may not be there, and asking them to leave, like thousands and thousands of them. Like, I would absolutely lose my mind. It's just a lot, you know, it's a lot. Oh, and for just a little extra cherry on the top here, they believe that Xenu was actually captured after a six year battle. And he's actually locked up in a mountain somewhere on earth. I can't make this stuff up, you guys. This is just how it is. Of all of the cults out there, Scientology has been reported to have some of the most harmful psychological side effects. As long as you're okay with that, we're gonna move on to OT4. So this is where you actually deal with all your druggy Thetans. Some of your Thetans are so like high off their face that they're just like not really conscious. So you have to kind of wake them up to get rid of them. You have to free yourself from these druggy Thetans or you'll risk being brainwashed again when you do die. Scientologists believe that you go to an implant station on Mars after you die. This is where you have your memory wiped before you get a new body. So, you need to do OT4 to make sure that doesn't happen. This time, you'll have an auditor to help you get rid of these body thetans. OT5. Okay, on this level, you're gonna learn about the universe according to L. Ron Hubbard, and you're gonna also audit, you guessed it, more body thetans. 
These ones are more stubborn than the ones on OT3 and 4. These ones were absolutely unconscious when you tried to order them out before. So now that you're more advanced, you'll be able to wake them up and then get rid of them. <laughs> what makes me really, really sad is that Scientologists are taught to believe that these body thetans can cause physical illness and mental illness. For example, um, many Scientologists have died of cancer and a good number of them will have chosen to have auditing over chemotherapy because they believe that the illness is caused by the body thetans. This kind of paranoia can also drive people absolutely crazy. Imagine thinking you had a bunch of body thetans on you. And not only that, other people have got body thetans on them as well. Some people fear catching them from each other, like you'll catch like bad vibes or something. And it has actually been rumored that Mr. David Miscavige himself is afraid of children. It's rumored that he stays far, far away from all people because he is afraid that their body thetans will latch onto him. I honestly cannot imagine how that would feel to like feel that you're infested with all of these aliens. Like how would you distinguish your own thoughts from the thoughts of the aliens, you know, like as I said, it's just it's just a lot. OT6 is a preparation course for OT7. You develop your powers in telepathy and begin to make things happen with your mind. Apparently, whenever there's a hurricane coming towards Clearwater, Florida, they gather up all the OTs at the Flag Land Base and they all audit together to try and control the body thetans that are controlling the hurricane. Okay, so they're, they're auditing the body thetans that are controlling the hurricane to steer the hurricane away from Florida. And when they don't get hit by the hurricane, they believe it's because they used their OT powers to steer the hurricane away. OT7. Congratulations, you are now at Tom Cruise's level. This level might take you 20 years to complete at about £40,000 per year for auditing. On this level, you hone in your superpowers even more and audit yet again more body thetans, both at the Flagland base and at home. And finally, the tip top of the bridge, OT8, the highest level you can achieve in Scientology. This level is so confidential that it can only be done at sea on Scientology's ship the free wins. On this level, you will actually look through all of your previous auditing sessions. The goal of this level is you have to identify when in your auditing sessions you were being somebody else or when one of the body thetans stories you were telling as your own. But basically, by the end of it, you should uh, realize that your entire case, all of your stories, were made up by the body thetans. So all of the things that you remembered as past lives um, and things like that were all your body thetans memories and not your memories. I would, I would be so mad. I'd be so angry. I'd be like, what? What? You made me go through all these past lives, things that I didn't think of, but you made me get there with the auditing, you know, the ask a question and then they go, I'll go back or we'll go back further. You know, they've coerced you into giving this story and then gone, well, you didn't, your body thetans made that up, not, and it's not your past life. It's not anything. I just can't, I just can't. If I was on that boat, I'd be like, you know what, I'm gonna swim back, I'll see you later, I cannot deal. <laughs> like, it must be devastating to go from zero to all the way at the end. Like we've crash coursed it, but imagine spending 40 years of your life doing this. You'd be so angry and I can see why people don't want to let go of belief because otherwise what the heck did you just do? To recap what's happened so far. First, you realize you have a reactive mind. Then you have to realize you mocked it all up yourself to be clear. Then you learn the real problem is actually the body thetans and then you learn that everything you thought was your past lives was also the body thetans. And now you are the same person as you were before you ever walked into a Scientology org. I, I would just scream. I'd be like, 
give me my money back, what the hell? If you haven't completely lost your mind at this point if you and you've completed OT8, to have one final little carrot to dangle, you will find out who you really are on OT9. But guess what? OT9 does not exist. So that is the whole bridge. That's all of the things you'll learn, all of the things you will pay for. Now, before we go any further, I just wanna say, I think it's fine to believe in whatever you want. Faith cannot be proven and bad things have happened in all different kinds of religions. There are many independent Scientologists that swear by auditing and really believe that it has benefits. And I'm not here to criticize the beliefs or the story. I'm just kind of laying it out here for you. But I do want to talk about OT powers. So your OT powers, operating Thetan powers. Your OT powers are something you already have, you just need to unlock them. You are a godlike being after all. These powers range from telekinesis, remote viewing, immunity from sickness, telepathy and super intelligence and even being able to control the world and people around you just by thinking. However, as featured on The Aftermath, Ruth Hines, who was a Class 9 auditor, stated that although he conducted 15,000 hours of auditing, he said he never saw anyone show any powers of this nature. But many Scientologists do believe they have these powers. It's a wonderful thing called confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is basically where after the fact of something happening, you link that thing happening to being a thing that you influenced. For example, let's say you're driving in your car towards a red traffic light and it goes green right as you approach. Scientologists will believe that they caused the lights to change. This type of magical thinking has actually been reported in people suffering with schizophrenia. And we know Mr. Elrond also had paranoid schizophrenia. Now, we saw a couple of the success stories last time. and I have more for you because they are super entertaining. <laughs> After every single course you do, you are required to write a success story. If you don't write one, you can't pass the course. If you don't gain the abilities they say you should, then you'll have to pay to do a different course to find out why you didn't get them. And then if you don't get any gains out of the course, then it's because you're a suppressive person. Obviously, Scientology is not working for you, it's because you're bloody evil. It's easy to see why Scientologists would claim to have all these abilities. Because if they don't, one, they've wasted a lot of money, two, they're gonna have to do a different course, and three, if they admit that it doesn't work, then they'll be called suppressive. These success stories are montaged together and shown to people on lower grades and levels on the bridge to promote them to continue up the bridge. Anyway, I find these success stories very entertaining. The music is wild. Um, so yeah, let's just show you a few of those. Enjoy. <laughs> Instead of being just a passenger, now I'm driving the train and I'm just going full blast towards eternity. Oh, she makes it, oh yeah, by the way, I discovered this one thing and I thought I'd just tell you about it. And it's always like, are you kidding me? Like I literally closed the lecture, I started crying, I wrote a huge success story, completely keyed out. This magic wand, boom, better, better, awesome, heck yeah. <laughs> Finally, I myself, I'm free. <laughs> I look at my bracelet and I'm like, oh my God. I'm clear. I'm clear. I'm clear. I'm clear. Clear. I am clear. Superpower, I transcended to a higher state. It was unbelievable for me. Can sense the saline content of my cells. You know? I said like Iron Man, like uh, big. For me, it's freedom. The ultimate freedom. No, I got stop. <laughs> this is what we all came in to Scientology for. That thought I just had came from that guy over there. And it got to the point where I was like, I started, I, I literally was saying to myself, please stop having conditions, I need to go to sleep. And I would find myself just laughing and laughing along with him. The sense of humor that he uses to relay some of the viewpoints and the and the data. You can't get confused on it. You can't go wrong. You can't stop because you just you start listening and it's like an addiction. You just want more. One is not enough. <laughs> you, you 
got to do them all. You got to do them all. I'm watching my body cooking my breakfast from the other side of the kitchen. The golden age of knowledge is freedom. The greatest wisdom we have ever had on planet Earth. The creation of the wheel, walking on the moon, the renaissance. The golden age of knowledge is the most important leap. Now, I know we haven't spoke about the little money thing that's going on down here, but you know, it's a small price to pay for your spiritual freedom. But if you can't pay for it, there is another way. Yes, the C organization is the church's clergy. They are the ones who dedicate their lives to deliver Scientology and ensure its survival. Members have been recruited from the age of eight years old. Once you're in, you're in for the rest of this lifetime and millions of lifetimes to come. If you join the Sea Org, there are some rules you have to follow. Rule number one, Sea Org members cannot have children. Number two, Sea Org members can't have certain media, including music, DVDs, or devices that connect to Wi-Fi. Number three, Sea Org members cannot have premarital sex. Number four, Sea Org members must ask permission to get married. Rule number five, if a pregnant Sea Org member wishes to keep her baby, then she must leave the Sea Org. Number six, if a member chooses to leave the Sea Org, there will be a free loaded debt that they will have to pay for. This debt covers all of the courses and training you've received for free up till now and will be charged to you as a debt since you did not finish your billion year contract. Number seven, you will follow a rigid schedule. Number eight, you cannot go anywhere alone. Rule number nine, you cannot have non org friends. Rule number 10, your pay is conditional. So how does it how does it work? Like there's no set time. Every week is different. But but still, can person get paid? Let's say if he doesn't didn't get paid, can person still get paid? Like for the money that he didn't get the money? No. No pay, no pay. Wow. Working for free, eh? Michael just said there was no pay last week, so I mean there's like no pay at all. Did you go to Treasury and see? No. Go to Treasury and see. Is anybody there now? Because I saw a trash sack at some event like half an hour ago. He might be there. Um, if not, lines hours when they do that is on the weekend right after lunch. I haven't been paid since I left the PF. Really? Rock, rock, rock. Oh no! And then the PF, I wasn't getting paid at all. Like after PF, they like paid me, like uh, they gave me two two paychecks, like I don't know, like a month ago. Okay, let's go see him tomorrow right after lunch, muster. Yeah. So why do they have a Sea Org? What is the point of it? Well, let me tell you a bit about where it all came from. The Sea Org was established on August 12th, 1967 by L. Ron Hubbard. He was on the run from the government. He gathered his most loyal followers and told them they were going on a mission at sea. The Sea Org catered to his every whim. A group of teenage girls would become his messengers and did anything he requested. To join the Sea Org, you will first have to do their boot camp, the EPF, or the Estates Project Force. This is a labor force and is supposed to be a three week boot camp, though many people have said they were assigned there for over six months. If you can make it through this boot camp, then you can join the Sea Org. Sea Org members are the most mistreated people by Scientology. They live communally in accommodation that is provided for by Scientology. This is where they uh, put the animal food, you know, just the flies, the living room work area for one of the roommates. Okay, so there was black mold. Yeah, so that's all black mold in there and roach poop and like the owner was warned about it. All he did was um buy a cover. Got dead, dead bugs in there that's been burnt. Roaches and there's a mouse trap right there. Oh dude, I've never even opened this thing before. Yeah. And this toilet is out too. There is 28 cats on this property in these cages. None of them really well taken care of. Is it true that you sleep with long sleeves? 
and rubber gloves, if that's your solution to fighting bed bugs instead of protecting your, your tenants, is that what's going on with you? Do you have anything to say for yourself about forcing myself, Charles here, my mom, my daughter to live with bed bugs? Most of them work every day, 9 a.m. till midnight for a maximum of $50 per week. And sometimes they don't even get paid at all. There are many reports from women who are ex Sea Org that say that they were pressured to get abortions. If you get pregnant when you're in the Sea Org, um, you either have to leave or you get an abortion. I know people who have gotten like up to four abortions. If you get pregnant, you get an abortion. If you won't get an abortion, you're out. And you're out and they give you a, a big bill. So you lose your job altogether. You lose your job altogether. Yeah. First, they very strongly try and coerce you to get an abortion, and I know several people who did. They call you a degraded being. What does that mean? That means you're like a criminal, like a bad person. When his Scientologist bosses found out about the pregnancy, they told him that I had to have an abortion or it would ruin his career as a Scientologist and destroy any chance of me being accepted by the organisation. According to Mike Rinder, it was common practice to be sleep deprived. Members typically get two to five hours of sleep a night. They have 15 minute breaks for provided meals. Members report eating rice and beans. And if they're in disciplinary, then they eat the leftovers after good standing members have finished their meals. The Sea Org are tasked with delivering the auditing to Scientologists as well as sales and manual labor. They consider themselves the most ethical people on the planet. Joey Chait was a member of the Sea Organization who also spent a few months in federal prison. He said that the prison was easier than the Sea Org. But for sacrificing your life, you will be rewarded with total spiritual freedom. In addition to your duties, you'll have study time where you can progress up the bridge for free. Unless you leave the Sea Org before your billion years is up, then you will be required to pay the freeloader debt to get back into good standing with the church. Fail to pay and you could be declared a suppressive person. However, this debt has no legal standing in a court of law. If you have left the Sea Org and you're watching this video, you can't go to jail for not paying that debt. So don't pay it. Being declared a suppressive person is the most ultimate threat in the Sea Org because not only will you lose your right to your spiritual freedom, you'll also uh, be out of contact with your family and your friends because when you're in the Sea Org, you're kept, all your contacts are also within the Sea Org. So it's like being banished or exiled from your group. Many won't even have a social security number They've never worked a normal job. They've never even made enough money to pay taxes, not to mention they are completely indoctrinated into Scientology's policies system. All of their information is completely controlled. They don't have access to the internet, their phone calls are monitored, and letters they send or receive are opened and read. They have very few personal belongings. Leaving must be one of the scariest things to consider for a Sea Org member and I'm sure that's why many of them choose to stay and take the abuse. The Sea Org are also Scientology's cheap labour workforce. They renovate buildings, they deliver Scientology and sell courses and books to parishioners. And I'm talking about children working 14 hours a day. You see, children in the Sea Org are treated no differently than adults. As we know, Scientologists believe that children are adults in teeny tiny bodies. It's child labour and it's wrong. I did find a YouTuber who goes by the name of Jen. She grew up in Scientology and in the Sea Org and she makes some really good videos explaining what that was like. Very great detail um, and I think it's really insightful. So. I will link her below if you want to see those videos. You can go to an auditing session and be audited by a child. As I mentioned, they do not get a full education. For a while, they also ran a cadet org back when Sea Org members were allowed to have children. Babies, toddlers and children were housed in the cadet org and some of the most horrific reports of child abuse came from that org. 
The most heartbreaking thing about the children of Scientology is that we are taught not to report abuse. There are so many stories about young children talking to adult Sea Org members and reporting things that they, they didn't think was right. They have told the adults about sexual or physical abuse and nothing is done about it. They are made to feel as though it is their own fault and they are asked why they are making their abusers wrong. They're also told that they shouldn't talk about it and they're especially told that they shouldn't be a victim. In some cases, they even have to make up with the abuser, which just means that the abusers can keep abusing. What's crazy to me is that in Scientology, some of these real world crimes are not punishable in Scientology, even though they would be punishable in the real world. Anything that is considered punishable is dealt with in Scientology's own court of law system. And people are told not to report things to the police or seek any sort of advice from outside the organization. The only true crime you can commit in Scientology is criticizing it. That's the main way you get declared an evil person. Let's talk about security checks. It's no doubt that after experiencing some awful treatment that you might start to have some doubts about Scientology. In that case, you will be subject to a security check. A security check is an interrogation carried out by an ethics officer and it can be done on people as young as six years old. Most Scientologists will have to do a security check at some point in their Scientology career. Oh, and you also have to pay for them. <laughs> The questions you'll be asked in these are different depending on how old you are. The goal of a security check is to get you to confess your evil intentions. Scientology want to make sure that you're not having doubts. If you are found to be having doubts, then punishment will ensue. Scientologists that fail the security check but wish to be in Scientology, they'll have to do a re-indoctrination. There are a number of ways you can be re-indoctrinated into Scientology. The first is the RPF, or the Rehabilitation Project Force. This is where you do mostly menial labor all day. Members can be sent here for doing something wrong in auditing, asking questions they don't have the rank for, suspected as having evil intentions towards Scientology, or even just irritating David Miscavige. Ex-members have compared it to the Gulag, a forced labor camp of the Soviet Union. Men, women, and children can be in the RPF for years. The church describes the RPF as a retreat where members can go who are stressed out by their jobs. They do simple labor and receive auditing until they are ready to go back on post. They wear black boiler suits, they work 14 to 19 hours a day with no pay, and they have to run absolutely everywhere. No walking allowed. They are even forced to sleep and live in degraded conditions. Basically, they cannot continue with Scientology until they are back in good standing. If they are disruptive on the RPF, then they are sent to the RPF's RPF. This is basically the same, just more extreme. There is a prison they can also be sent to called The Hole, but we will cover that in another episode. Other punishments are called lower conditions. They can be executed within the Sea Org and the regular orgs. There are different punishments for crimes of liability, treason, and doubt. Members are not allowed further training and they are marked with rags on their arms or black marks on their cheeks so the other Scientologists know what they are being punished for. They do not get paid and they are confined to the org 24 hours a day. Good standing members of Scientology will be told not to speak to them. Now we're on to one of the most ridiculous groups I've ever seen in my life. They're called the Squirrel Busters. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, but this group are actually dedicated to like harassing ex-members. If you've left Scientology and you practice Scientology, it's called squirreling. So this group aimed to seek out people who are doing that and bust them. Hence, the squirrel busters. The most documented case of this is that of Marty Rathburn. He was a high ranking executive of the church. He and his wife received frequent visits to their home from the squirrel busters. They surveilled their house and attempted to wind them up so much to get a rise out of Marty that they would record and use for their hate documentary they were making 
to show to the other Scientologists to be like, look, he's crazy and he's doing Scientology out of, out of Scientology land and look, he's crazy and he's doing it all wrong. Don't listen to him. However, the best thing I saw that came out of this it was just such a wholesome moment for something so just icky. So basically, Marty's neighbours had clocked that this, these, this Scientologist group were following him around, right? So the next time they visited, they set up all of the sprinklers around where they lived so that when they came, they all just whacked the sprinklers on and soaked them all. I'm Joanne, and this is Steve. We're the Squirrel Busters. Behind us is the squirrel himself, Marty Robson. Take a good look at the Squirrel Marty. That is what a supportive community looks like, people. Spray your enemies with water, yes. Speaking of enemies, let's talk about what happens if you are an enemy of the church. You can leave the church, but if you speak out, you will become an enemy. There are two main ways you can leave. You can route out where you go through months of interrogation and sign documents that say you were never abused by Scientology, or you can blow, which is an unauthorized exit from the church. They have a policy of disconnection, where basically anyone that you know in the church that is still a Scientologist will not be allowed to talk to you. This can be a threat for members who have left, but have not yet been declared suppressive. Basically, they use it as like leverage. So they're like, okay, you've left, but if you don't say anything, then we won't declare you suppressive and you can still talk to your family. But if you say something bad about us, then you're gonna be a declared suppressive person and you're never gonna to talk to your family again. So it's quite effective and a lot of people haven't spoken out because of that. Other enemies also include the media or basically anybody that criticizes the church. This is all part of their fair game policy. Fair game policy was a real document that existed. It was canceled officially because it caused some bad PR but it clearly says that even though it's canceled, the treatment of SPs are the same. So even though the official fair game policy is canceled, you should still sue, lie to and destroy your enemies. Some of the tactics that they use to fair game people include stalking by private investigators, surveillance on your home, stealing your trash, picketing outside your house, creating hate websites online, creating hateful videos on YouTube, contacting your employers and telling them you're a religious bigot and they shouldn't employ you, sending people to interrogate you at your house, revealing private information told in your auditing sessions, sending hateful letters about you to your neighbors, harassing your friends and family and potentially fair gaming them if their tactics don't work on you. I have not yet received any fair gamings, but if I do, I will certainly remember to document it all and let you know what the heck that is like. But my guess is I'm just not important enough right now for them to fair game me. Like if they put something out on me, they would give me more traction, which is kind of not what they want. So I uh, guess I'm off the radar for now. Journalists like John Sweeney of the BBC and Louis Theroux had experienced harassment from Scientologists while trying to make their documentaries. They were followed by private investigators with cameras. Scientology made their own documentary about John Sweeney to show to Scientologists. This was made to discredit him and anything he uncovered. Ex-members that have spoken out in interviews, even right here on YouTube, have had hate websites made about them. One of the most famous and heartbreaking cases of fair gaming is that of Paulette Cooper. Paulette Cooper is an American author and journalist, and she experienced fair game by the Church of Scientology after releasing her book, The Scandal of Scientology. She was orphaned after her parents were killed in the Holocaust and later became a journalist. She saw the totalitarian organization of Scientology as something that people should be warned about, and she published her book. Here is Paulette talking on ABC News about how they fair gamed her. I was in New York at the time, and I picked up the phone and got the first of several death threats. And that's how I knew 
that the article had come out. They sued me 19 times all over the world, put me through 50 days of depositions. They sent a lot of horrible anonymous smear letters about me. For example, to all the neighbors in my building, they sent, that's three, it was 300 people, they sent a letter saying that I was a prostitute with venereal disease and had sexually molested a two-year-old baby girl. They found out that I had been in a period of slight depression and had seen a psychiatrist, so they robbed the psychiatrist and got my records and sent that to everybody that I knew. The worst thing that they did was that they stole my stationery. They got my fingerprint on a piece of paper and then they sent bomb threats to themselves and they had me arrested for a terrorist crime that I not only didn't commit but I didn't know what was going on and I was arrested and I was indicted and I was up for 15 years in jail and it was just the most horrible, horrible time in my life. Operation Freakout was a plot to destroy Paulette Cooper. This involved Scientology sending fake bomb threats to themselves from Paulette and she actually got arrested for it. Her mental health was declining through this time and she came close to taking her own life. The church documents everything they do, so during the 1971 FBI raid of Scientology, these documents called Operation Freakout were found and Paulette was exonerated. These documents were only recovered because of the next thing we're about to talk about. Operation Snow White. Journalists and ex-members are not the only ones to be subject to harassment from Scientology. In the 1970s, L. Ron Hubbard created Operation Snow White. This was a criminal conspiracy and the biggest infiltration of government in US history. 5,000 covert agents were involved in this crime. Some were told to get secretary and cleaning jobs within government offices, including the IRS, and then steal any documents that were unfavorable about Scientology and anything linking L. Ron Hubbard to criminal activity. They committed infiltration, theft, and wiretapping. They got busted, and 11 members of Scientology were sent to prison, including L. Ron Hubbard's own wife. They pleaded guilty and were convicted in federal court of obstructing justice, burglary of government offices, and theft of documents and government property. Let's talk about the IRS. So, Scientology's war with the IRS has been long-standing. When Scientology was first introduced, it had tax-exempt status. This was later removed after they discovered that the money was being used to benefit its founder, L. Ron Hubbard. Religions have tax exemption because that extra tax money is meant to be put back into the community. That money is supposed to be used to provide services that the government would otherwise have to provide. By not following this, they lost their tax exempt status. They would then spend the next 37 years disputing this with the IRS. They owed a billion dollars in taxes. The church was reported to have used blackmail, burglary, criminal conspiracy, eavesdropping, espionage, falsification of records, fraud, front groups, harassment, political and media campaigns, tax evasion and theft. The church also launched investigations of individuals that worked at the IRS. These people are literally just accountants and they've probably never ever faced this kind of pursuit before. Scientology instigated more than 2,500 lawsuits against employees of the IRS. And then basically what happened is David Miscavige went in there and said, look, we can make all of these lawsuits go away if you just give us our tax exemption. And it looks like that's exactly what they did. Uh, on October the 1st, 1993, the IRS issued letters recognizing Scientology and every one of its organizations as fully tax exempt. The war is over. It's not just the money that is a problem with being classified as a religion. 
When you're a religious organization, you can dispute that any lawsuits or legal matters are a religious issue. This is thanks to the First Amendment. The First Amendment prevents judges from talking about any matters considered religious and they're not even allowed to look at the policies within the church or read any of the documents. When you have the world's most expensive lawyers on your side and the First Amendment, there's a lot you can get away with. Many actually choose not to sue Scientology because they can financially outlast pretty much anyone and justice is rarely ever served. That concludes part four. I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. I'm sorry this one took me a while to get out and I will have the next part out very, very soon. Um, thank you for your support and uh, commenting and talking to me about the series. I've seen so many awesome comments of people sharing, you know, their own experiences and that's been really cool. Part five will be coming out soon. Um, they're going to be six parts in total and then we will have our whole iceberg completed. I will see you in part five.